Welcome back everyone to the Kirby Marathon, where I'm talking about a bunch of Kirby games that weren't on in this collection. Today we're talking about Kirby's Epic Yarn. Blah, 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 let's just get right into it. So the 2000s were a period of time where Kirby was just sorta of coasting along. Couple of spin-offs, couple of remakes, and of course the two main games that were handed off to a different developer. During the late 2000s, it sort of seemed like all hope was lost for the future of the series. F-Zero fans know what I'm talking about. Metroid fans too, oh man. But alas, a shimmer of light appeared during Nintendo's E3 2010 conference. Bam, brand new Kirby on console after 10 years, ending the longest time ever between new Kirby games. And it's all made out of yarn and fabric, woohoo, arts and crafts. Sure, it wasn't necessarily a main entry in the series, but needless to say, I was still super excited. Kirby's Epic Yarn comes to us from the company Goodfeel, who has actually made quite a few games, but is primarily known for three. Yeah, that's right, three. Sure, basically everybody knows that they would go on to make Yoshi's Woolly World, which is fantastic by the way, but also Wario Land Shake It, quite a forgotten platforming gem on the Wii. It's also known as the Shake Dimension in Europe. I don't know Europeans, you tell me. Apparently the phrase shake it is offensive over there. These game title changes, I, I can never understand them. Yeah. Upon starting the game up, oh man, this game is cute. Dreamland is in the midst of a crisis. A mysterious sorcerer is going around and turning innocent people into yarn. How evil. Meanwhile, Kirby is simply enjoying his day, oblivious to the disaster, because of course he is. However, when he spots a tomato and goes to inhale it, it turns out the vegetable is property of that evil sorcerer, who, I guess on his free time, just decided to hang out inside of a bush with a tomato on his head? How evil! Kirby manages to suck the vegetable down, and for revenge, the sorcerer, whose name is Yin Yarn, by the way, sucks Kirby into his... sock. What? Kirby ends up inside of a world made entirely out of yarn. It feels like pants. Or if you live in Europe, it feels like trousers. A four month delay put to good use right there, folks. It is just such weird dialogue. I'm imagining the story director getting ideas for the script, like, yes. Suddenly a yarn creature is being chased by a monster. Since Kirby himself is now made out of yarn, inhaling no longer works, so instead, he has the brilliant intuition to transform into a car, and brings the yarn boy, whose name is Prince Fluff by the way, to safety. Not the first thing my mind would have went to in that situation, but hey, it worked, how can I complain? And after the prince shows Kirby the ropes, or should I say, the strings, <laughs> Of this new world, another monster approaches, but once that's dealt with, a string of magic yarn appears. It turns out that Yin Yarn is ripping the world of Patchland apart, and said magical yarn is used to stitch everything back together. With that, the adventure to save the yarn world begins. Now this is an inherently adorable premise, but adding to said adorableness is the narrator reading over the story as if it were a parent telling it to a child. This shows up even more so with some really cute interactions that play out in between worlds. And frankly, it's a pretty interesting way of telling a story. Mmm, but Anthony, isn't this just further proof that Kirby games are just for kids? Shh. Shut up. If you're playing a game like this and you're still worried about your masculinity, believe me, the narration is going to be the least of your worries. Immediately after starting the first stage, it is easy to see that this is not your typical Kirby fare. Traditional Kirby is a relatively fast-paced adventure with rapid-fire ability switching and main antagonists that come from the depths of hell. Rated E for E, that's scary. Instead, Epic Yarn is a much slower adventure with a stronger emphasis on exploration and a total lack of copy abilities, but more on that later. There's even the addition of co-op with player two playing as Prince Fluff, which is a cute little feature, I suppose. And if you were quick to think, oh man, this isn't like a Kirby game at all. Well, that's because initially it wasn't one. This was originally a game starring Prince Fluff in a yarn world, and that was it. 
until Nintendo came in and offered to throw in the pink puffball, and well, the rest is history, I suppose. Since Kirby can no longer inhale, his main form of attack is a string of yarn that is used like a lasso to either grab up enemies or whatever they toss at you and chuck them at others, or to pull different objects like buttons or zippers to get access to other platforms or items. And... alright, I can't avoid talking about it anymore. The entire game is made out of arts and crafts! You see, it's one thing to use a rope as a means to bring a platform closer to you, it's another for a cute pink ball of yarn using string to pull a button that scrunches the background fabric, bringing the platform closer to you in the process. This is something that lasts the entire game. Water is just a layer of blue string. Snowballs are made out of cotton. Fire shows notable burn marks on the material behind it. Hidden tags show up from time to time and attach themselves to background materials, allowing them to be peeled off. Nearly every level has an awesome and unique animation revealing how its entrance opens up rather than just appearing. And for the love of all that is holy, the Waddle Dees squeak when they fall. Mm! Epic Yarn goes above and beyond simply having a unique art style. It is an essential element to most of the game's different mechanics. And you couple that with each level tossing out a unique concept and... Well, that's pretty incredible, honestly. The bosses really aren't all that special, to be honest, but I mean, aside from that... There's a level where you drive over pianos that leave musical notes to collect, one where you explore a beach at night, only to soon wake up the sun and bring on the day, one where you climb up a giant Christmas tree, one where you pummel wispy woods with missiles, that's right, take it, you overgrown branch! Okay, I think... I think things got a bit violent there for a second. My apologies. Whew. Hey, did you know that the Japanese commercial for Kirby's Adventure looks an awful lot like Epic Yarn? To put it simply, the art style makes the game constantly feel inviting and friendly, sort of like Little Big Planet, if I were to compare it to anything. In addition to all of that is a fantastic soundtrack. The other two games that I've talked about in this marathon so far all had typical Kirby music, meaning cheerful stuff that was quality, but really only a few tracks that were memorable. There were a lot of reused tracks as well. I guess that's why I really didn't talk about them all that much. However, Epic Yarn's piano-filled soundtrack has an aura of soft yet adventurous, with basically every single piece suiting the calm nature of the environments perfectly, from catchy and upbeat to smooth and ambient. Hell, sometimes a near-full orchestra comes out to join the party. The entire game is simply a pleasure to listen to and to look at. As far as your goals are concerned, each level has three treasure chests within them containing pieces of furniture or music tracks. And you do actually have to go out of your way for quite a few of these, so while it's not overly common, I still found myself finishing levels with only one chest missing, and that constantly upsets me. Aside from that, Kirby stumbles upon thousands and thousands of beads. Aww, look everybody, true love. These are used as a grading system of sorts at the end of a level, but are also used as a reward for skillfully playing the game. Whenever you take a hit or fall down a pit, heh <laughs> that rhymed, beads will fly out of you and go everywhere, though many of them are still easy to pick right back up. So basically the rings from Sonic. This also means that there is no health system and no life system. Playing poorly simply means less beads and a slight bit of annoyance. Sure, the game is not really all that difficult in the first place, like, at all, but challenge is not the point of the game. Now, this was a bit of a hot topic back when the game first came out, and a whole lot of people were complaining about it. Personally speaking, I feel that lives in a platformer hasn't really meant much in quite a while. The, the whole fear of losing your lives, personally speaking, once again, hasn't added anything to a game in years, especially in a game like this that is mostly about exploration. Granted, I am a bit of a Kirby apologist, but this is fine. 
And as I mentioned before, copy abilities are no more. I mean, bless his heart, he tried, but this yarn world simply ain't having it. Instead, Kirby has a plethora of different transformations that show up from time to time to change things up. Normally, he can do things like turn into a car instead of run, a parachute instead of floating, or a submarine instead of swimming. But occasionally, you'll hit up metamortex forms that completely change how Kirby controls. Some are more on the simple side, like the digger, the dolphin, or the UFO. Yes, run. <laughs> run. But others are a bit more special, such as the fire truck which has you aim your water nozzle by tilting the Wiimote, which is similar to the tank bot where you do the same to aim your missiles. Or the train, which sucks. I mean really, look how slow this thing goes, and I gotta point at the screen the whole time? Ha, <sighs> no thanks. Rounding off the list are a few more special ones, such as the off-roader for racing, the spin border for on-rails platforming, or the rocket slash starship where the game decides to play like a vertical or horizontal shooter instead. And you know what? I actually really like this idea. It allows the game to still feel like Kirby while sort of not feeling like Kirby at the same time. And I mean seriously, come on. Kirby is manning a giant tank that is designed based off himself going on a murderous rampage. It's awesome! I mean, really, when you think about it, the Kirby series as a whole is a whole lot of him going on murderous rampages, so I mean, kind of par for the course, really. A majority of the treasures that you collect on your adventure come in the form of furniture, and that is where Kirby's pad comes into play. So basically, Kirby has a customizable apartment, and it is as odd as it sounds. The landlord doesn't even charge him any rent, so I mean, pff, that's nice of him. You can dress up your place however you like, including purchasable fabrics for the walls and floors. And yeah, it's stupid adorable. The building has a few other tenants as well in the form of these little sprite-like characters. And for some reason, despite being new to the world, you are asked to design their apartments. Luckily though, these guys are super easy to please. Hey yo, what's up? My name is Zeke and welcome to my crib. As you can see here, got my couch next to my sweet flower clock. That's it. Get out of my house. As a reward for decking their places out, these little characters then give you some mini games to play. There's hide and seek, bead collecting, escorting, fighting practice, and racing. These all replace the typical Kirby sub games. And it's kind of a shame. Again, Epic Yarn shines because of its emphasis on exploration. When you try forcing challenge into a game that's not challenging, it feels really forced. These are not enjoyable at all. I did them the one time for 100% and that's it. But at the very least, my apartment is pretty cute. <laughs> Throughout the adventure, we see Yin Yarn causing more havoc in the real world, taking control and Yarn, 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 Yarnifying, I guess, Waddle Dee's, King Dedede, and even Meta Knight. It seems that all hope is lost, but luckily, Prince Fluff pulls out another magical sock! Where'd, where'd you pick that up, you little nasty? It actually turns out that Yin Yarn only stole one of the pair of magical socks. Hey, you, you goofed up. But now, we're able to travel back to Dreamland and find Kirby's home completely transformed into yarn and fabric! Not a problem though, after traveling through familiar but arts and crafts e locales, it is time to encounter Yin Yarn once and for all. Pretty basic boss fight, you got a bit of a boss rush, blended in with Yin Yarn giving you the tools to attack him. After you finish him off, well, he's not done yet, he has now turned into a big ball, sorcerer. E evil by taking advantage of the tank bot power up given to us to use and after like a thousand missiles to the face I don't even care if I'm getting hit at this point yin yarn is defeated dreamland returns to normal as does Kirby and Prince fluff returns back to his restored patchland as long as you have this magic sock you can visit me anytime oh I mean that's how I say goodbye to my friends too and that concludes Kirby's epic yarn Overall, Epic Yarn is excellent. In terms of core platforming, this game is really not going to blow you away. But this is a perfect example of a game's theme making the game better than it is, resulting in just a pleasant experience all around. 
Realistically, the themes explored in this game are not all that unique. You end up traveling through a grassland, a waterland, a lava land, but the thing is, there are still these things that they do within the setting that make them stand out. Like in the snow world, for example, you go through these warm and cozy cabins in one of the levels, and that's something that you really don't see very often. Between the aesthetics, the music, and the solid gameplay mechanics, Kirby's Epic Yarn goes down as one of the better games in the series, and a glorious return of the pink puffball after years of being on the shelf. Goodfeel would obviously take this idea and go above and beyond once again with Yoshi at the helm, but that's for another time. Maybe. Don't hold your breath. Well, with that all being said, I think that is going to wrap up part one of this Kirby Marathon. Now trust me, I would like to talk about all of the other Kirby games right now, but I got other projects I want to work on first. No worries though, before you know it, part two will be upon us. Next time on the Kirby Marathon, Kirby's Return to Dreamland, and then we're going to get to these two games here, and then we're going to talk about every single spin-off. There's a bunch of them, and I'm going to talk about all of them. Well, well, not Air Ride. I've, I've already done Air Ride, uh, and you can watch that right here. It, this is pretty shameless, I understand that, um, but I didn't know how else to end the video. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll keep this nice and brief. If you want to check out the rest of the Kirby Marathon that I've currently gone through, you can check them out here. You should also check out my Let's Play channel. Rumors are circulating that there's going to be some more Kirby content on there as well, but, uh, but you didn't hear that from me. You should go and check out for yourself. But alright, I am done here. More Kirby Marathon in a couple of months, but until then, I will catch you guys next time. Bye bye